What's up, everyone? It's Jimmy Allen Daily. This is day 15. So here's the deal. I'm going to film this on the 15th, but I'm actually going to publish it on the 16th because I've been uploading late at night. And I think that a lot of my friends list are all like off of Facebook by 10 p.m. And it's 9.30 something right now. So, and I want people to see it. I want people to see, you know, the stuff that I, I put out. Sometimes it's helpful. Um, sometimes it's me rambling. But the goal is um, that for with this one that I'm filming right now is that I want people to see it. Um, what I want to talk to you guys about today is living on the beach in Puerto Rico for four months. So um, I have an entire set of like clips and videos and pictures and stuff like that that I want to show you all. Um, the big goal with this one is to find somebody who's been on the fence, but like, I want to go travel. Uh, I don't know really how to make it possible. Um, I'm going to take the clips and tell you guys like how we made it possible um, that we can take, I mean, I, and you know, this was a couple years ago, but you can still uh, take the same method that we did in order to like find an Airbnb. And I'll explain all of that as we were like looking at the Airbnb. Um, but the, the strategy and then like go apply it, go choose where you want to be in your travel and um, just go make it happen, you know? Uh, but Puerto Rico was amazing. It was hands down the best uh, adventure, vacation, honeymoon kind of experience, long-term travel experience that uh, my wife and I could have ever wished for. Um, God redeemed our uh, our honeymoon that we didn't get to take whenever we first got married. Uh, and, and he made it just 77 times better, you know. So that being said, uh, let's start rolling some clips and let's talk about uh, when Liz and I lived in Puerto Rico for four months. All right, hey you guys. So this was the Airbnb that we stayed at in San Juan, Puerto Rico. We were just a couple of minutes away from the beach. We were on the bottom floor on the first level, just right there at the very first front door. Our bedroom, well actually this was our guest bedroom and then this was our master bedroom and then our living room and our kitchen. It was all very simple and we kept very minimal stuff. Six, <laughs> six suitcases that we lived out of while we were in Puerto Rico. We were just a few minutes from the beach. We went and walked the beach every single day. So while we were down there, we also ended up joining a church. The very first thing we ever did was go to a big cookout and uh, baptism with them out on the beach. We did worship music. They cooked a bunch of like super amazing food. They were baptizing people out in the bay. And overall, it was just a super amazing and spirit, spirit filled time. Something else that I got to do while I was out there was buy and sell a car, which was just a horrific experience dealing with the Puerto Rican government, dealing with the stamps and the licensure and yada. It's just uh, such a headache buying and selling a car out there. All right, the next thing is I want to talk about some of the adventures that we went on. Obviously, we lived up by Ocean Park in San Juan, and so we were just by the beach all the time every day, and so that's very obvious. But there are actually some really cool hidden beaches in Puerto Rico that are just above and beyond in terms of experience. So I want to show you this clip here. Yo, here it goes. Alex, are you ready? So obviously that entire experience is just insane. That beach is called Playa del Obispo and it literally means the beach of the bishop because you're just constantly getting sprayed with water as it as it slams into the rocks, shoots up like 60 feet in the air. It is just an incredible, amazing experience on the north side of the island. Next is a pond that we went to called Charco Frio. This pond was inside of the island on near the rainforest uh, inland of Ceiba. It is just an amazing hike that you go out to upstream from here is just a big waterfall and some like slides that you can go down. But right here is a big pool and they've got ropes tied off so that you can do a bunch of like rope swinging. We got to go on a bunch of, on a bunch of adventures. We got to invite friends down. So we had friends come visit. Obviously we got into shenanigans, but for the most part, we just had an amazing time on the beach, just running and playing and just having a good time, goofing off, making sandcastles, burying myself in the sand, exploring weird new places like the pink salt flats, going into the forts that were, you know, built way, way back in the day. 
getting amazing dinners on the beach. And of course, one of my favorite things that we got to do was touring the Rondell Barley Toe Factory, getting to taste some of the rum. Here you can see the master uh, taster is sampling some of the, what they call barlitos, and so the little barrel. And that's what the name is, Rondell Barley Toe, rum from the little barrel. And it's just always paired with good friends and good times. So yeah, we just went on big adventures and uh, explored a ton. I also got to bring family down. So these are my folks. My parents came down to come visit. Obviously, my mom is like my mom's a goofball, but an even bigger goofball we got to see is my uncle Louise. He is just he's a riot, and so we got to invite him over. My mom and her brother got to be reconnected for a little bit, eat some meals. Obviously, we took them to go on the beach as well. And we're back to the Rondo Barlito factory. This place, I was addicted to it. I'm not going to lie. The, the, the drinks were amazing. The tour is amazing. It's so cool to learn about the heritage of the island, the history, what they were able to bring across from France in terms of distilling methods, but also pair it with some other American heritage stuff. And finally, the trip started coming to an end because we realized that, man, we really just were missing family so much and we needed to get back to being in proximity to the people that we love and care about. So that church that we had gone to, we ended up making a lot of really great friends. And so we had a, a final hangout with them, like a worship night. They said goodbye to us, and it was time for us to pack our bags. We packed up our all of our suitcases. That was what we lived, lived out of, those five bags and the brown bag that's on the bed right there. And then finally, it was time to say goodbye. So we packed it all up. We got on, on our flight, and we headed back home. But... Some habits are hard to kill, so I brought back some Rondell with us, and we kept parting it up like we were living on the beach. That, in a nutshell, was some of our experiences four months in Puerto Rico.